So tell us about contemporary knights before I dive into the, you know, the specific questions. Uh, you, you've mentioned before that it's a collective that experiments with uh, different artistic expressions. Um, like it's, uh, I have a feeling that it's very free, uh, which is just very nice, which is very, uh, because we, we, we all have these limitations and through collaboration, we kind of find, or uh, we kind of find this understanding and this energy that seeps from one artist to another. There's this exchange, there's this constant exchange. Um, so at Contemporary Nights, what's so different? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's almost like existential questions to Contemporary Nights. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, Welcome to the Unnamed Show. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> thank you. So Asking existential questions since 2020. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Basically, is birthed out of a need. Uh, so it was, it was a three artists uh, living and working in Addis Ababa, and we had certain needs or like certain um, limitations within the space that we wanted to overcome. So the three of us is um, Dawid Seto, who's a performing artist, um, and another performing artist called Jessie Brett. Um, she's originally from Wales, currently living in Addis Ababa. So the three of us, um, we looked at what is um, the, the art scene. And the one thing um, that was unavailable is, for example, space. There was limitation in um, uh, exhibition and showcase spaces um, and the other one is the thing that I mentioned earlier about like art circles or like certain media existing within silos in Addis Ababa as opposed to collaboration and yeah so for the space we decided you know to uh, basically approach people who are running spaces like cafes or even galleries and ask them if we can use the space for our pop-up event for a night. And of course, uh, a lot of people were willing. We actually never got rejection. So there, there was this idea of like activating spaces. Um, mm -hmm. We literally need like these sets, institutional infrastructures for us to showcase and share our works. We can mm -hmm. like make solutions, basically what, uh, at the beginning, the primary thing that Contemporary Night did was organize a event every month. So it was not an open call, but we like asked, solicited application from artists asking like, would you want to like exhibit or perform in our next event? Um, and pe artists were responsive, space owners were um, open, even cultural institutions were really open to like um, host us for an evening. So the one thing that we learned about like Addis as a city is there are physical spaces, but we just needed to activate that space. And the other mm. one, yeah, the, so, and when thinking about the silo in um, disciplinary, like an art disciplinary is basically um, usually we do have, we only have like, for example, art exhibitions where only visual artists are there or like performance where only artists of that medium come. But if we let a performer share a space with a visual artist and curate that event as a wholesome concept and narrative that both of them are contributing equally, then that dialogue is already started and the artist will also, um, I guess, nurture that beginning collaboration into their next creative output. And uh. of, um, the last thing, the third need that Contemporary Nights is based on is when we had these pop-up exhibitions and even now whenever we showcase work, we make time for conversation or we make time for discourse. Um, one thing is to give artists their due um criticism or their due not like criticism as like constructive criticism something that kind of responds to their work so it, it doesn't it's met with a conversation and a dialogue rather than um just an applause on the opening night but this idea of really starting a conversation because that's what an artwork is or does it's basically 
it packages some sort of outlook in life. And that has to, we are doing a disservice to artists and the art if we don't engage that into dialogue, into our current realities. So um, the third crux of Contemporary Nights is making those dialogues and discourses. Um, through that sense, now the three pillars that we stand on are convergence, speaking about space, community, speaking about um, this dialogue, and collaboration, speaking about like a cost yeah, post-disciplinary practices. So mm. in short, this is what, that, what we're trying to do. And it, of course, it's a process. It never is like a definitive, oh, here we are. We're always in that process of even the idea of like trying to define what collaborative, what community, what convergence really means has fed into our practice, has fed into how we organize our events, how we engage with the people that we work with. Um, so we are within this process in Contemporary Nights. That's big. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, it's, it's, uh, what I really find interesting is that you have found this, uh, and this is, we've, this is something we've always discussed, Bermnet and I, uh, is that even within different mediums of art, uh, say photography, there's a severe lack of collaboration. And then uh, let alone, you know, different, you know, a painter collaborating with a photographer, a dancer collaborating with a poet, a fashion designer collaborating with a, with a, with a poet. Um, so I think that's, that's something that's very important. This, this collaboration, uh, this lack of collaboration that you have managed to um, alleviate or start to address. Kind of, yeah. Allevi to address. Yes, exactly. Um, that's very interesting. And also the pop up, uh, the, the idea that it pops up uh, is very interesting because if it was one space, it wouldn't be as, uh, as versatile as it, is, as it is now. Because when you have, when you engage different spaces and you activate those spaces, you're kind of creating that uh, awareness in society. Mm -hmm. And that's something we as a society very much need, that awareness of, of art, that awareness of, um, of artists, that awareness of collaboration, that awareness of art, not only for aesthetics or beauty, but also for uh, a place of conversation, uh, kind of like a starting point of, of conversation. Um, I think it's, it's a very interesting effort. So if someone wanted to partner up or someone wanted to participate, what are the ways? Mm, mm, okay. <laughs> um, so um, Contemporary Nights as a collective, uh, we are, we expand and contract based on the project that we are working on at the moment. So mm. it, it's a, very open platform anyone can reach us either email or instagram <laughs> mm. or mm. Um, other places and ask for collaboration and we're always open for dialogue about like what um the other person or the other entity has in mind and um yeah and at the moment we're also part of like um a continental residential network over Pro Helvetica. So also through an application, they can be a resident with Contemporary Nights. Um, but we're definitely open for um, any sort of conversation about um, anyone who would want to work with Contemporary Nights. Um, at the moment, it is myself, uh, Dawit Seto, and uh, Nafkot Gabayo, who's working actively on Contemporary Nights. Um, but whenever mm. we have like more projects or like bigger things in our hands, we expand. And we also had like the good fortune of working with Brooke and Co. over Night of Ideas, for example. With who? With who? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to plug that in. <laughs> Um, 
really interesting collaboration and we were really happy with our um, working relationship and it is something that we want to continue doing with um, our upcoming projects. Um, and there are uh, upcoming projects as well. So it's an exciting time for us as well, thankfully. Okay. Okay. So Mark Derej, I don't know if you can see the pinned uh, comment. Uh, has said, I think art only advances whenever a certain culture advances or is created. And technology is sort of a culture. Do you think tech is culture or do you think it shapes culture? I think it because, has evolved uh -huh. toward... You're right. I think it was... I mean, it was something that had shaped culture or I don't know, actually. It's something I think it's kind of like a, a chicken or the egg kind of situation. <laughs> but usually culture, when, when we talk about culture, it usually brings with it a sort of this idea that it's already established. But with tech, it, it, the word tech brings with it this idea that it's just appearing. You know what I mean? Yes. And so in a way, if you see them on a, on a timeline, there's going to be culture and there's going to be tech uh, that's moving through time. So tech in a way could, uh, could shape culture, but I don't think it can be culture. Mm. Interesting. The, the thing Mark, that can come is what we talked about okay, earlier. Okay, go, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah is um, when we said like Corona made, made us realize how out of control things are. Uh, and yeah. I feel like also had that, it gave us that revelation, I think, about the way we think about culture. Um, as you said, I think we usually use culture synonymously with tradition, where it is something that is established, unmovable. And then suddenly there is the tech uh, culture or like the, which introduced the agency for us or like shows us that agency that we are capable of uh, mm. starting movement in that way. Um, mm. That is something that came to mind, but of course, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a very, <laughs> it's all existential. <laughs> so uh, Yusahak Sahai, says, I think tech blends cultures and minimizes the variety, but it creates its own culture. Mm. Uh, I think this is also about globalization in a way and the rise of social media. But um, I think the integri this, this question also touches on the integrity of culture or, the, or, or how strong it is. Uh, and it's kind of diff not difficult but just like language it it's its appearance or disappearance be belongs to the amount of people that are practicing that culture or that are <clears throat> influenced influenced by that culture and like many things in, in being influenced is unless you're very very aware you don't know how much you're influenced so in a way, with, with the rise of social media and our most of us staying at home and binging on social media and uh, how internet is becoming more and more accessible, even in, 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 in our country, I think what he's trying to say is that there's going to be a molding of culture so much so that people within the same culture are going to be those there are going to be two groups, one who's influenced by tech so much and the other who's not very influenced. So kind of like an urban and rural kind of division. Mm. I think that's what he's trying to, or what he or she is trying to say. Isaac, what do you think? Okay, with my, uh, okay, uh, this is Bemnet. Okay. Bemnet says, 
With my minuscule understanding, I think mixed media sort of emphasizes the process as valuable as the outputs. How do you relate? I'll, I'll push this question to you and you only. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I love it. Okay. <laughs> so um, recently I was actually almost a year ago, um, I was able to curate um, a work, collage based work um, co called Collage Broadly Defined. And the reason that I was attracted to collage as a, as a, as a means of expression is this idea of uh, taking a whole, um, constructing, deconstructing, and then that whole process of like experimenting with different fragments of what would eventually become a wholesome thing. So I think that could apply, that applies to this multidisciplinary way of um, making art where different parts um, are able to like, we're able to kind of experiment with how to bring together um, fragments to create a whole. And that um, experimentation process is as important as what you would like to say, or like um, it feeds to um, the message of your work um, as much as what your work appears to be at the end. Um, so definitely, uh, but for me, I, for, from like my way of engaging with art, I think the process of even um, like a singular media is um, important as output or the process the artist goes through, goes through or like the, the context they, that they came into that um, for me is an interesting aspect as much as the end product. Uh, but of course, this is a personal uh, perspective as well. Mm, but yeah, this is, um, he's definitely, um, I agree with Bamnet that uh, the multidisciplinary uh, way of uh, making art gives em emphasis to the process. Um, mm. Mm. But yeah, I do have a question. Okay. Is it always going to be at night? <laughs> Your pop-ups? Um, it's, it's not, it's usually in the evenings, um, but it's taking into consideration what our audience is. It's, uh, well, you know, people have day jobs, um, a lot of artists, we have not yet, m like, made that our, you know, main way of, like, main means of, like, surviving, but it's about the, logistically, it makes sense. And we would be able to have more people from different parts of our society together at that point. And there's also something yeah. really beautiful about the night. I think it's mythical. It's, um, it holds a lot of possibility. Um, that's why it is happening then as well. Mm. Oh, <laughs> okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Sarah for taking your time and taking, dedicating your energy to, uh, to this wonderful night. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for coming in and giving us the input, sharing your thoughts, your, what you've learned, what you're yet to learn and so on. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Bruno. Do you have anything to say? This is your time. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> no, thank you so much. I am really appreciative of you and the show. And um, this is exactly um, what it means to carry dialogue and have people share in and be part of the conversation. So I really appreciate the work that you're doing. Um, and thank you so much um, for having me. Thank you. Tonight. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> Welcome, Gizi. Namasagnalan. Yeah, you, you, you should go okay. and bum that. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>